In this video, we're going to have a look at simplifying fractions. Now, if we have a look at this picture here, you'll see that half of the shape is shaded. And if we draw the same shape, it's the same amount that's shaded. But if we split the shape up into four, we can see that two quarters of the shape is shaded. So because it's the same amount that's been shaded each time, we can see that half and two quarters have the same value. And the name given to two fractions which have the same value is that they are equivalent fractions. They are equal to one another. Now, the one on the left in this case is the fraction in its simplest form. Simplifying a fraction just means giving it in the form which is simplest to understand, simplest to use, and so on. And you notice that when you have a small top number or small numerator, small denominator, bottom number, the fraction is easier to understand and easier to use. So that's our goal. We want to get the numerator and the denominator as small as possible without uh, changing the numerator and the denominator into uh, decimals. We want to keep them as whole numbers and we also want to make sure that our fraction is still the same value at the end of the day. So if we have a look at four pairs of fractions, you'll notice that the column on the left is the fractions in their simplest form and each of these fractions is paired with an equivalent fraction. Now if you look at the right hand column and you ask yourself, well how do you go from the right hand column to the left hand column? And you see here, for example, in the top fraction, two quarters, you just divide the top and the bottom by the same number, in this case two, and you get to one over two. In this one, you divide top and bottom by three, and you get one over two. In this one, you divide top and bottom by four, and you get from eight to two, and from 20 to 5. So to simplify a fraction, what you want to do is divide the top and the bottom by the same number until you can't do it anymore. Now, to simplify a fraction, all you want to do is just ask yourself what goes into the numerator and the denominator. And for example, 2 quarters, you could divide top and bottom by 2, and you'd end up with 1 half. 2 eighths, you would divide top and bottom by 2 again, and you get 1 quarter. 3 sixths, again, divide top and bottom, this time by 3, because 3 and 6 are both divisible by 3, and you get your fraction in its simplest form. You can't go any simpler than a half. There's nothing that goes into 1 and 2 except 1, which won't change anything. To go from 8 twentieths to 2 fifths, you divide top and bottom by 4, and that takes you to the fraction in its simplest form, and you can't go any further. So, to simplify a fraction, all you do is divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number. And to work out what number you should divide the numerator and the denominator by, you've got to make use of your knowledge of tables. And the bigger the better. You can sometimes simplify in one step, or sometimes you might take a couple of steps to get to your fully simplified fraction. So the question you want to ask yourself when you're simplifying a fraction is, look at the numerator and the denominator and ask yourself, what times table has stations of 9 and 21? And in this case, the answer is 3. So you divide the top by 3 to get a new numerator, divide the bottom by 3 to get a new denominator, so your final answer, simplified fraction, is 3 sevenths. In this case, what is what times table has stations at 8 and 12? Now, you could have a couple of answers here. You could have the 2 times table, you could have the 4 times table. The bigger, the better, so go with 4. Divide top and bottom by 4, and you end up with 2 over 3, 2 thirds. For this one, what goes into 20 and 50? Divide top and bottom by 10, and you end up with a fraction simplified uh, as 2 fifths. For this one, what goes into 24 and 32? Again, you could have multiple answers. You could have 2, you could have uh, 4, you could have 8. Uh, the biggest of these choices is... Uh, best, because that will get you to your answer straight away. Divide top and bottom by 8, you end up with 3 on the top and 4 on the bottom. And it's a lot easier to understand when somebody talks about 3 quarters than it is when somebody talks about 24 32s. Okay, 24 over 90, what can we do here? Well, sometimes it's not that easy to figure out what the biggest number is that you can divide by, so just go with something you know. You know that they're both even numbers, so divide top and bottom by 2, you end up with 12 over 45. Now, is there anything that goes into 12 and 45? 
Yes, there is. You can then divide these two numbers by 3. And you end up with 4 on the top. And 45 divided by 3 is 15. Now, can you go any further on than 4 over 15? And the answer is no. There's nothing, no number that goes into 4 and 15 apart from 1. So you've reached the end of the road. 30 over 45. What goes into 30 and 45? You could divide top and bottom by 5. You get 6 on the top. You get 9 on the bottom. Can you go any further? Yes, because 6 and 9 are both in the 3 times table. So divide top and bottom by 3. You end up with 2 on the top, 3 on the bottom, and that's you reach the end of the board. 2 thirds is your final answer. 54 over 72. Again, they're both even numbers, so let's just divide top and bottom by 2. You end up with 27 over 36. Anything that goes into 27 and 36? Well, yes, there is. You could divide top and bottom by 3. So you have 9 on the top, and you have 12 on the bottom. Is that you? No, because 9 and 12 are both divisible by 3 again. So divide by 3 again, and you end up with 3 on the top and 4 on the bottom. So you can take as many steps as you like, as long as what you're doing is the same for the top and the bottom, for the numerator and the denominator. Okay, so that's how you simplify fractions. Look at the top, look at the bottom, decide what you can divide by, and continue dividing down so that you cannot go any further. So I hope that was helpful.